Hi, I'm Andy Silver, and this is the third installment of my Aviation and Climate series for my channel, Decarbonize. In part one, I talked about how planes are getting more fuel efficient. In part two, I talked about sustainable aviation fuels, or biofuels, and why I'm not optimistic about them. But there's another approach to sustainable aviation, electric planes, which can be powered by batteries or hydrogen. It's best to view these developments in the context of the innovator's dilemma, which I discussed in my video on electric cars. Historically, technology revolutions start with small companies servicing a niche rather than the large legacy players who have a vested interest in maintaining the status quo. So I'll be focusing on startups doing interesting work and not on Airbus or Boeing. What many don't appreciate is that electric aviation is already here. There are over 10 million aircraft powered by batteries and electric motors across the globe. We just don't call them aircraft or planes, but drones or unmanned aerial vehicles. Throughout the history of aviation, the military has led the way and electric aviation is no exception. The first drones, like the Predator and the Reaper, were powered by compact internal combustion engines. But as the drones got smaller and were deployed in tactical situations, battery-powered ones that could be transported in a backpack and managed by a single soldier in the field became the norm. These unmanned surveillance vehicles allowed smaller units a bird's-eye view of whatever they needed to see. A few years later, these unarmed drones were joined by their armed cousins like the Switchblade. But it's the war in Ukraine where these small electric aircraft have come into their own. Now you have someone in every squad using skills developed by hours with an Xbox or a PlayStation flying first-person view or FPV drones that could have been purchased off of Amazon. Ukraine is committed to producing one million drones in 2024 and is in integrating AI into many of them. Another use case for electric aviation is delivering packages. For instance, Zipline has a system delivering medical supplies in 15 minutes across the entire country of Rwanda. They also have an urban drone delivery system that is whisper quiet and safe. They've delivered almost 10 million items and flown almost 70 million miles. If you want to see more about what they're doing, there's a link to a fun Mark Rober video where he visits Rwanda. All of these examples are limited by being unmanned and with a payload that is smaller than a person. But when people think of aviation, they want to know when they will board a plane that is powered by electricity, not when the Amazon truck will be a drone. But if you think the work on drones is irrelevant to electric planes carrying passengers, think again. The millions of hours of experience with planes with electric propulsion will give people, airlines, and regulators data about their safety and reliability. And when electric aviation incorporates autonomous vehicles, which is going to happen, the experience of companies like Zipline will make that much easier. There are two early niches for passenger aircraft. One, completely new aircraft that are battery powered, and the other retrofitting existing aircraft with hydrogen fuel cells powering electric engines. For the first niche, the trip must be over a short distance and be lucrative per mile to justify the cost of developing a new class of aircraft and getting them licensed. Luckily, such a market already exists, air taxis. Joby and Volocopter are two companies designing, building, and testing battery-powered air taxis. There are commercially viable routes that are short enough for battery-powered vehicles to serve with today's technology. For about $200, you can take a helicopter from Manhattan to JFK Airport, which is about a five-minute ride by helicopter that would be quieter, cleaner, safer, and cheaper with an electric aircraft. If the costs of the electric taxi can be brought down sufficiently, the market might be quite large since a one-hour Uber ride to the airport costs close to $100. Both companies are in the process of getting type certification for their aircraft. At first, these will be piloted, 
but this use case is well suited to autonomous aviation since they're only flying a well understood route. It's pretty rare for a kid to run out between cars to chase a ball at a thousand meters up. And our experience with delivery drones shows that autonomous aviation is doable. These air taxis can also satisfy other markets. Imagine a flyover of the Grand Canyon in a nearly silent electric aircraft. The other niche is regional jets. These are much larger than an air taxi, but still on the small size for commercial airplanes, with fewer than 100 seats and some less than 40. Their range is much larger than 10 miles of an air taxi, up to about 2,000 miles. Since they always fly over land, they'll always be near an airport in case of mechanical failure. Two leaders in this field are Zeroavia and Universal Hydrogen. Batteries for flights that long would be too large and heavy, so both companies store hydrogen on board and use it to power a fuel cell, which provides electricity to electric engines that turn the props. I'm generally not a big fan of hydrogen, which I think has been way overhyped, but long distance aviation is a use case where I do think hydrogen makes sense. The hydrogen is generated by running electricity from wind or solar through an electrolyzer. Zeroavia's approach is to produce hydrogen at the airport or nearby. Refueling happens by connecting a hose from a fuel truck to a plane and pumping in gaseous hydrogen, similar to a standard airplane. Universal Hydrogen has modules filled off-site with liquid hydrogen that are loaded onto the planes using standard equipment. Both companies agree that liquid hydrogen will be needed for longer range flights and larger planes. Zero Hydrogen has already flown a Dash 8 converted to hydrogen fuel, and I'll link to the video below. Zero Avia is testing its system on a converted Dornier 228. Both companies are in the FAA certification process and intend to power zero emission commercial aircraft by 2025. Since these companies are leveraging existing aircraft, the certification process is not as daunting as a completely new aircraft like the air taxis. Whether or not these companies accomplish their first commercial flights by the end of 2025 is unclear, and how quickly they ramp up is also unclear. But there's little question that we'll start to see electric passenger travel this decade. The routes will start few and short, but will get longer and more numerous every year. Since the approach of both companies is to retrofit existing airplanes, they can ramp up much faster than if they were building planes from scratch and waiting for the airlines to replace an asset they typically keep for over 20 years. Electric aircraft will move up the payload and range step by step, air taxis with batteries, short range regional flights with compressed hydrogen, longer range and larger planes with liquid hydrogen. I expect that transoceanic flights will require planes designed for the ground up to store large amounts of liquid hydrogen, and it will be at least 20 years until we see a transatlantic flight, and maybe another 10 years after that until we see a trans-Pacific one. But there's no reason this can't happen. But whether you're a fan of sustainable aviation fuels or electric aircraft, this sector will be primarily powered by fossil fuels for at least the next 10 years. So what's a person to do if you have a flight today that can't be missed? My fourth and final video in this series will be on carbon credits. What are they? Should you get them? And how do you find good ones? If you've learned something, please like and subscribe. It really does help this channel succeed. If you want to support this work, you can buy me a refreshing beverage at the link in the description. If you have any thoughts, please share them in the comments. Also, Please share this video with anyone you know who flies a lot.